there's been a lot of noise about electric vehicles, that they rely too heavily on rare earth minerals, and they're no cleaner than gas cars, that they're just a different flavor of an environmental disaster. But here's what these reports are not telling you. The world's biggest mining operation didn't just start with EVs. It started the moment we fired up the first gasoline engine. Today, in this episode, we're pulling back the curtain on a century of constant extraction, constant pollution, and constant consumption, and showing you why one machine needs endless replenishment while the other is finally breaking the cycle. Let's start with something that every gas car has and EVs don't, the catalytic converter. It's packed with rare, precious metals, platinum, palladium, and rhodium. Each car burns through 5 to 15 grams of these metals. They're mined at great cost, and once they wear out, forget about recovery, most are lost forever. Now let's take the cobalt finger pointing and point it in the right direction. If you think cobalt is just an EV problem, you need to think again. For nearly 100 years, cobalt-based catalysts have been critical to refining gasoline and diesel. Every gallon of fuel you burn owes a debt to cobalt, and none of that is recycled. This is something that's not new. It's been hidden in plain sight every time you pull up to the pump. In just the United States alone, the U.S. refining industry uses about 94.5 metric tons of cobalt every year. That's about one pound for every 80,000 gallons of fuel. Not bad, right? Well, let's look. Instead of burning that cobalt into oblivion, that same cobalt could build almost 20,000 EV batteries annually. Multiply that use by 50 years and we could have 1 million EVs on the road. Close to a million EVs have been lost at the pump. But in an EV, 95% of that cobalt can be recycled on the other end. In gasoline, it's gone forever, never to be seen again. Poof, burned right under the atmosphere. So now let's do a scorecard. Here's the real scoreboard. Gas cars burn through platinum. They use cobalt during refining and need copper that they barely recycle. In EVs, they use copper too, but they skip the gas. They recycle lithium and cobalt at rates gasoline can only dream of. This isn't a one-for-one -one swap. It is an upgrade. And here's something the oil and gas industry want to hide from you. It gets better. New battery chemistries like lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, use zero cobalt. In 2015, cobalt was essential for EV batteries. By 2025, it is far less essential. And by 2030, we're talking about 5% or lower for new EVs. Some won't use cobalt at all. EVs aren't adding to a problem, they're engineering it away. It will disappear. So, if EVs are the rare earth villains, what does that make a century of gasoline cars, catalytic converters, oil rigs, and oil tankers? EVs aren't perfect, nothing is, but they don't require daily fuel extraction just to keep rolling. And for those folks still waiting for unicorns and rainbows to power their cars, guess what? Over 40% of EV charging in the U.S. is already coming from renewable energy. Add rooftop solar and you can literally drive on sunshine. Only one machine needs endless drilling, endless refining, and endless combustion. And it's not electric. The gasoline car is a machine that consumes the earth every single day. The electric car is a machine that gives us a chance to stop doing that. It's easy to fear what's new. It's even easier to defend the status quo. But history doesn't move forward by playing it safe. History moves when we choose better, even if it's hard, even if it's different. A hundred years of gasoline brought us here. It's time for something better. It's time for something electric. Thanks for watching. 
If this gave you something to think about, hit like, leave a comment, and most importantly, subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you out there or somewhere along that route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody. <music>